as you probably know from my previous productions, uh, I al I'm always attracted to plays that there is a first of a kind in them. Uh, with Machinaldi was the first woman ever to sit on the electric chair. Ubu was the first absurd play ever written in the 19th century. And uh, Wojciech is a first because we mark the, the birth of, the, um, of modern theater with Wojciech. Wojciech is a play that I discovered as a student myself. It's something that's sort of beloved of theater people because of its historical significance. Uh, I studied it as an undergraduate in graduate school and actually when I got out of graduate school um, it was the very first play that I designed fresh out of graduate school because I had a friend who was a director and we said to ourselves, you know, what, what do we love? What do we really want to work on? And Wojciech was the play that we chose. So um, I already have a history with the play and I think, I mean, that was back in the mid-90s, so it's been sort of kicking around in my brain for a long time. Before George Buchner wrote this play, we had the Romanticism, we had neoclassical theater, so he was always dealing with uh, kings, queens, royalty, legends. Nobody really, uh, uh, by that time, had written a play about the common man. And now this 23-year-old boy really comes along and writes this incredible play about a common person, which is Wojciech. This person is in the army and is being used and abused by uh, the authorities, by uh, the, 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 the military and uh, the medical establishment. And uh, you see through that the development of a person that he cannot quite know how to verbalize what he feels and he ends up doing an act that it's, well, it's forbidden. What? I think I found as the years went by, you know, it, it took a back burner and, and I've worked on a lot of other things. Um, but I, I feel like just my understanding of the world and humanity grew in the time being. And when I returned to the play, it felt like it had even more meaning and significance. I actually began working on an adaptation of it with um, a colleague named Christopher Pfeiffer who is our uh, sound designer and uh, sort of musical director for this play. And Christopher and I were talking about it in terms of um, writing some original music for it and uh, updating it, changing it from Germany in the 1830s to the American South during the Depression. Um, so I mentioned it to Alkis in the office one day and he said, are you kidding? <laughs> I was thinking about doing the play, you know, next semester. Slowly, Wojciech. Nice and slowly. When Buchner wrote it, um, unfortunately he didn't finish it. He died when he was 23 years old. So we have scenes there was no beginning, middle, and an end. And uh, later on, when, when the scholars uh, uh, lay their hands on it, they realize, my God, this is, a, this is, again, this is a wonderful and interesting story that must be, must be told. So they, in essence, they became their own dramaturgs. In other words, they had to arrange and rearrange scenes. So that was a first difficulty of how to tell a story that is fragmented but to tell, to tell a story in such a way that has its own inner logic. It frightens me when I think about the world. When I think about eternity. Duty, Wojciech. Duty. There's the eternal. That is eternal. That you can understand, but then again nothing is eternal. It's only a moment, a mere moment. 
frightens me to think that the world turns itself around in a single day. I am the captain, which is kind of uh, the leader of the, the unit that they have in the play. So he's above everyone else. He's kind of like the highest of the high in the place. The representation of authority. Where will it all end? The captain represents authority. He's um, kind of a, the representation of what authority versus the lower class is. So you see him exert his authority over Wojciech, which is the common man, and the contrast between them. <laughs> <laughs> A North Scepter. <laughs> Good boy, check. Uh, that boy's dumber than a box of rocks. It's a classic, and it does speak to all generations. I, I felt like in creating my own adaptation that I needed to make the language feel modern, immediate, um, but the way that a working class person would speak. Now, Wojciech, you're a good man. Yes, sir. But Wojciech, you have no morality. Moving the location of the play to the south, we are also using accents. Um, so we have our student actors are sort of learning Appalachian accents. Although I, I should make it clear that we are saying we are inspired by Appalachia in the Depression. We are not really doing a play about Appalachia in the Depression. So that, that's our inspiration and whether the audience gets it or not, that, that's okay. That, that's our internal inspiration. Morality. Where you have morals, you see. It's a role that I think uh, you know any actor would pretty much jump at. Um, there's not much not to like about doing this role. Um, it's an incredible challenge. I tell myself, you are a virtuous man, a good man, a good man. Yes, sir, Captain, sir, virtue. I ain't got much of that, but if I could be virtuous, you know, if I could talk like a gentleman and such, if, if I had me like a, I don't, I don't know if my perception is, is correct. I, I have a lot of empathy for the character of Wojciech. Uh, I feel very close to him. I think that it's been pointed out numerous times uh, by scholars and people who have studied the play that he is, if not the first, one of the theater's first anti-heroes in that he, he's not a king or a queen or even of, of the bourgeois class type. Uh, you know, he's, he's, a work, he's a working man and um, he's up against forces much greater than himself. I think for me that what I'm having trouble with is not to sentimentalize the character too much um, because I, uh, I, I genuinely feel for this character. Nice and slowly down the street. Wojciech, you're dismissed. I would like the audience to take home this. When they see Wojciech, they should say to themselves, oh boy, I better eat something more than peas. Because this is what he's eating throughout the play for, for, for months and months and months. And they exp remember, they're expelling him and menting on him, right? So he can only eat peas. So the hallucinations that he has and the things that he sees and the way he reacts is because of lack of food, because they're using him as a guinea pig. So now when the audience sees this, of course I'm I'm, I'm saying this in jest, that you, you, know, you gotta eat something more. Uh, but to watch, watch out uh, when they say yes to something and when they accept something as a given or because it comes from a higher authority. To watch out 
because you don't know what it contains. You may, you may be the next Wojtek. Running through the world like an open razor. It's liable to cut someone.